Welcome back to ASX Market Watch. Thanks very much for coming back. Thanks for checking out the markets with me. And uh, thanks for being interested in the markets and being able to chat about them with me because, quite frankly, it's great to have people to chat about the market too. I'm looking at the three big guys today, looking at the ASX Top 200 again, my favorite um, barometer for looking at which way I should be trading in the, in the market. Um, and actually more on that as well <laughs> about which way I'm trading. Um, also the Dow Jones and the FTSE. As well, the Dow Jones and the FTSE, checking out where they're where they're looking at. Actually, looking at the Elliott Wave counts for the Dow Jones and the FTSE, um, and looking at this uh, this bold broadening wedge pattern, which has been the focus of my analysis, and it's worked so far. It's worked gangbusters on the ASX Top 200. So let's get into it. And again, thanks very much for stopping by. It's really good to have you here. Um, so yeah, ASX Top 200. This is it, and this is our beautiful broadening wedge pattern, which has been forming over the last six months. Um, before that, let me just say we had our trend line. Here it is. Here our trend line entry in around. Um, this is a solid trend line entry in around July 2009. Had a beautiful bull run for a couple of months. There was a lot of beautiful money to be made, and then um, over the last six months from where we are today, sideways action, which has been a little bit harsh. Um, but now the market is starting to move, which is beautiful. It's really good. Now, um, this broadening wedge. So what we said last week um, was that the price would go through our broadening wedge pattern, which it has. Um, I said it would find support. Now, this is based on a um, uh, Elliott Wave, oh, not Elliott Wave, the Fibonacci retracements, sorry. Um, so it said it would find support at around the 4000 280 level, which is, I'll just see if I can mark that for you. It's right here. So the market traveled below that um, for one day. Here it is, I'll just enlarge that. Traveled below it for one day, closed above it, and then what I said then, now I know this, uh, sorry if this is uh, just every, all the past, but you know, just sort of keeping up to speed. So I gave you an entry uh, signal, which was based on this single bar. Now because this bar came right down and uh, throughout the day and then closed back on its highs. Um, that's what, uh, I can't remember the exact candlestick term, I think it's a hammer, um, and the literal meaning of hammer is um, is searching for the bottom. So what it's doing is it's searching for the bottom, it's found the bottom, and then it's come all the way back up. Now the entry signal based on that is to put your stop buy at the top of the bar and your stop loss at the bottom of the bar. Now, yeah, so basically, long story short, that was the exact bottom so far. So in other words, we've had the bounce. It's worked a treat. Um, now, that is not to say, guys, um, and thank you for your emails, by the way, because everyone has written in and said, look, Dave, it's in a downtrending market. Why are you taking a long position? Um, and I did take two positions on long stocks. Um, ANZ and RIV in the Australian markets um, based on this same pattern. And look, guys, you're absolutely right. So technically, we are still in a short-term downtrend. And what I did last week, trying to pick the bottom, that is a fool's game. Um, yes, it has worked in this instance, but guys, it's uh, not recommended. Like, it's not something that I would try and do on a regular basis. Um, I was just giving you an idea of where you can put your entry and your stop loss if you wanted to based on this, this little entry pattern here. And it's just one way to enter. There are hundreds of ways to enter. So as I said, we are still in that downtrend. And if you were trading this market at the moment, your stop loss would be at break even so you would have brought your stop loss back up to break even for a theoretical risk free trade what that means is now your risk is almost gone all you've got is your brokerage costs obviously um, so I hope that makes sense guys it's a great way to manage your trade there by the way now looking at this short term downtrend line yes we are still below it so yes technically we're still in a short term downtrend um, keep uh, stay cautious in other words um, and don't be a fool and try and pick bottoms like I did, because <laughs> next time I may not be so lucky. Um, but anyway, I hope that helps, guys. Um, by the way, on the Australian uh, ASX Top 200, the next strongest position, whoop, I might just uh, see if I can get a better better line there. Ah, look, this one will do. The next strongest posi position is at 4,050. So um, technically, if it does break below this um, this bar, which has given us our bounce so far, the next strongest level is at 4,050. Um, and yeah, like quite frankly, as I said, still in a short-term downtrend. Yes, we got lucky with the bounce at the moment, um, but what we'd be looking for is for it to pass above this short-term downtrend line 
at around 4,500. Hope that makes sense, guys. <laughs> um, now, the next one is the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones is a little bit more exciting because um, the Dow Jones and the FTSE, they both have had solid Elliott Wave counts. And um, I'll just show you exactly what's unfolding um, as per my personal count at the moment. Um, this little bar here, this is our one. Now, as you know, Elliott Wave goes in five waves. So it's five waves up, one, two, three, four, five, and then three waves down in an ABC correction. So, wave one, wave two. Wave three, which is usually the longest wave. Wave four, which is usually a sideways movement. Wave five, which is usually the last wave. And now we've got our A wave. Um, at least that's how I see it. Now what we'd be seeing in the future on the Dow Jones Industrials is our wave B and wave C, which is our ABC correction there. And um, that technically could bring higher prices past that point. Um, once that correction ends. Now, if you'll notice on the Dow Jones, yes, it is in that correction phase because it has passed our beautiful uptrend line, the simple tool that I love so much that it um, really does help me out in the markets. Yes, it has passed that. I'll just get rid of all these little extra bits here. There we go. Um, so it's passed that. And as you can see, it's sort of waiting for the bounce as well in the Dow Jones with all these long-tailed bars. So what we'd be expecting is basically that A, B, C move on the Dow Jones, at least if you subscribe to the theory of Elliott Wave. And I hope that helps on the Dow Jones. Now lastly, the FTSE is really similar. Check this out. We've got one, two, three, four. Three, which is usually the longest. Four, which is usually a sideways move. Just remember that one. That's basically the best part about Elliott Wave. Very simple. Um, and that's our fifth wave. And then what we're looking at is our A, B, C correction. And again, why do we know that it's in correction mode? Because it has crossed below our beautiful uptrend line again. And such a simple thing. Anyone, I mean, seriously, anyone can draw these uptrend lines on a chart. Um, now, it takes a little bit more um, study to check check out the rules of uh, Elliott Wave. But yeah, basically, that's that's a basic idea of where it might be heading according to Elliott Wave. Um, and really, that will bring us over to our to the strongest period of the year, which will usually be um, September is usually the weakest. August to September is usually the weakest months of the year, at least um, historically. Uh, the strongest months are between November and January. So this little ABC correction may bring us into November and January, where the market will start to rise further again. At least um, that's one way of looking at it, according to Elliott Wave. So guys, thanks for stopping by this week. Check out my website. It's asxmarketwatch.com. And um, there's all the tools that I use and also my personal trading diary. Um, check out the, the last two trades that I've made. They, were, uh, they caused a bit of a stir, as rightly they should have, because I was trading the wrong way. <laughs> but they still worked out, thank goodness. Um, so it's www.asxmarketwatch.com. Swing me a message. Stop by. Have a chat. It'll be great to have you there. But other than that, I'll see you next week, guys. And happy trading.